7,000 miles away in Canada, we're on the trail of a smart little animal that scientists think we could be making even smarter. In their natural habitat, raccoons are opportunistic omnivores. These guys can and will eat anything. Many have ditched the countryside and followed their stomachs to come to our cities and get at our food. Experts believe these urban raccoons are becoming more intelligent than their country cousins. So what's making these city dwellers smarter? Raccoons may look adorable, but these cheeky masked bandits are wreaking havoc in our towns and cities. Raiding dustbins, digging up gardens, and even setting up home inside our houses. In Toronto, the raccoon population is flourishing thanks to easy access to our leftovers. Residents are resorting to the bungee cord in an attempt to make their bins raccoon proof. Yet many are still waking up to find them trashed. Zoologist Lucy Cook is with Dr. Suzanne McDonald, who, for the last three years, has been using night vision cameras to study just how these raccoons are breaking into bins. It's fantastic to see how they're all just figuring it out. They are really smart, aren't they? These urban raccoons are working as a team. The bungee cord just doesn't defeat them. They flip the bin and then stretch it to open the lid just wide enough for one lucky raccoon to get inside. The rural animals never did this. Not one animal ever got into the garbage can, ever. Whereas about 80% of the urban animals figured it out. Suzanne devised other tests and the results were the same. The city dwellers always came out top of the class. I think they are street smart. They know how to approach new things and to spend some time to figure them out, whereas the rural ones don't do that. Why would they do that? They don't have to spend time figuring out human objects. Fundamentally, us creating these cities and these new environments is sort of putting a wedge in the species and sort of causing a divide. I think so, and I think, you know, raccoons have been in the Toronto area for 100 years, so that's plenty of time for evolution to happen, and it would make sense. It would be strange if it didn't happen, that we hadn't created a difference in the raccoons because they've had to live with us. They, they've evolved with us. We keep one-upping each other and the end result is a smart little raccoon. In an attempt to outwit these resourceful raccoons, experts in the Toronto Council have devised a new impenetrable bin, complete with lockable lid to foil these masked raiders. It may be stumping the nocturnal thieves for now, but if Suzanne is right, all it's doing is ensuring that there'll be even smarter raccoons in the future. But a thousand miles away, in NASA in the Bahamas, there's a seriously clever raccoon who's been making headlines. Beneath these sheets is a wild raccoon that's taken its relationship with humans to a whole new level. This is Pumpkin. She is 13 months old and lives with, and often on, Laura Young. Laura's family found Pumpkin with a broken leg after she fell out of a tree. Laura nursed her back to health, and although Pumpkin can return to the wild whenever she wants, she clearly prefers domesticated life with Laura and her dog. Come on, Pumpkin. She loves eggs, mm. any style, anyway. But sunny side up is her favorite because of the yolk. <laughs> yeah. It's becoming clear why Pumpkin prefers living here to the wild. Raccoons are famously intelligent. What's it like sharing your home with such an intelligent animal? Every single day, it's a new adventure. She's always up to something. She's always trying to get into different things. She's always trying to open our doors. Our entire house has to be baby-proofed <laughs> because of her. She's so intelligent and she's always figuring out new little things. Every day is something new. What is she doing now? She's so clever, she's decided she wants to do some reading. Yeah. One of the things that she's taught herself to do is actually pee in the toilet. So she knows how to go up to it, pees, but she hasn't learned how to flush it yet. So we'll, we'll see if that ever happens. <laughs> she's definitely not boring. Not at all. Every day, we're running after her. Yeah. It's like having a two-year-old permanently. 
it's clear to see how stimulating Laura's house is for Pumpkin. She wants to touch and sniff everything, which can be a bit scary. And Pumpkin doesn't even need to see what she's pulling apart. Scientists have discovered that a raccoon's paws have more sensory receptors than almost any other mammal. The raccoon's brain is actually shaped to respond to tactile stimulation. So what that means is when they put their hand on something, they can basically see it. Their brain sees it. So it, it has an outline of what the object is in their brain. When you see Pumpkin's phenomenal dexterity combined with her ability to climb, it's understandable why Laura has to tie up or completely remove all of the handles in her kitchen. You wouldn't want this lady around your best crockery. Pumpkin's instincts drive her to investigate everything, including Laura's cupboards. But when there's a human to provide all her catering needs, it's hardly surprising this raccoon is showing little interest in life back in the wild. And just when you thought they couldn't get any smarter, there's another one across the water in Florida. With three million hits on the internet, Roxy the raccoon has become a bit of a social media sensation. What are you doing? Although this behavior may simply look cute, what's truly remarkable is this could be evidence of tool use in a raccoon, which we know is only normally associated with the most intelligent animals. She gets a rock and knocks on my door. Roxy, using a stone to bang on the glass to call for her dinner, suggests just how clever this wild animal has become. The behavior of Toronto's raccoons and the antics of Pumpkin and Roxy helps prove that wild animals become more intelligent when they master human environments. 10,000 miles away to Cambodia, where there could be a new brain box on the block. This is a sun bear cub. The sun bear is native to Southeast Asia and is the world's smallest bear. But remarkably, it has a bigger brain relative to its body size than any land carnivore. These little guys don't hibernate like their US cousins. They're always on the go. Over the past 18 years, the Free the Bears Sanctuary in southern Cambodia has rescued almost 200 bears from the illegal wildlife trade. Experts here believe that the sun bear needs to be smarter than the average bear to survive in the Asian rainforest. We're going to put that theory to the test and see how bright they really are. Sanctuary director Nev Broadis is taking biologist Patrick Ayi to meet the bears and help test their intelligence. You know, one, one thing that I immediately notice about the sun bear is that magical looking golden bib. Uh, that's where it gets its name, the sun bear from. It looks like the sun when he stands up. He absolutely adores honey. Yeah. Is that something that he'd eat naturally in the wild? Yeah, this is a once in a blue moon opportunity to come across a nice big bee's nest full of honey. A 25 centimeter long tongue and massive claws for climbing are a few of the adaptations a sun bear has to help it find food in the rainforest. But above all, they need to be very resourceful and researchers believe this is why they are so good at solving problems. To see how smart these bears really are, we're going to set them three classic intelligence tests. First up, simple problem solving. Put some honey in that. Right. Nev fills a tube of tough bamboo with honey. It's too far down for a sun bear to reach with its tongue and is hidden by vegetation. Let me just chuck that in there. Honey. <laughs> if Rani can work out first where the honey is and then how to get to it, Come on, Rani. she'll show that she can think ahead to imagine the outcome of her actions. It's a mental process that so far has only been seen in apes and some birds. She should be able to smell the honey in there, right? That's right. 
to leave our greens till last. Probably pull those out. Honey's what she's after. Yep, too deep for a ton. Whoa! Literally one bite. Rani has cracked the first problem-solving test. She worked out that the smell of honey came from inside the bamboo and that by using her jaws and claws, she could break it open and reach her tasty prize. But do sun bears have the brains to match their brawn? The second intelligence test centers on something called object permanence, which is the ability to understand that an object still exists, even though it can't be seen. For this test, there are three buckets and a banana reward. Five-year-old Fortnum is facing this challenge. Fortnum has to watch under which bucket the banana is hidden, then go and retrieve it. It might sound pretty simple, but scientists have shown that it's only the cleverest animals that will consistently identify the correct bucket. Once they lose sight of it, most animals would behave as if the banana no longer existed. So that he can't simply sniff out his reward, out he comes. All the buckets have been scented with banana. Well, it looks like he's going directly to bucket number one. Surprise! <laughs> ding ding. Do you think that he's actually remembering where it is? Yeah, sure, because he's not sniffing each of the buckets. He clocked which one had the bananas in it, went straight to it. Fortnum gets it right time after time. Bingo. He's done it. We don't have this ability until we're over a year old and experts believe that the skill has developed in sun bears because of the challenges they face in the forest. I think it's got a lot to do with the environment. Their territory is very large, but they have to remember where fruiting trees are, they have to remember the seasons that the trees will fruit, um, they have to remember where water sources are. So it does require a level of intelligence that perhaps you, you wouldn't find in a different landscape. The final and most demanding test is one that only the most intelligent animals, including great apes and dogs, can pass. And to make it really difficult, this one's for little Alfie, who at just 12 months old, is a long way from being a fully developed sunbear. More tasty banana is put into one end of a tube. The catch is there's a sheet of perspex dividing the tube in half, creating an invisible barrier between Alfie and the treat. Coming in from the right, Alfie must work out that to get to the banana, he can't access it from this side and must go round to the other side to reach the reward. At this point, most animals would continue to reach uselessly for the fruit before giving up entirely. Perfect, look at that, getting his head well in there. Go on. <laughs> He's got it. It's taken well this clever one-year-old just a few minutes to solve a puzzle that baffles nearly every other species that's tried it. So it seems that the sun bear is not just smarter than the average bear, it's also one of the brainiest animals on the planet. New research is also leading us to question long-held beliefs about a very different group of animals.